I find it ridiculous how loosely people say that the world is waking up without even facing the realities of the what is. And you look at the news on the internet, and I have documented so much. That so much of what you're seeing on some of these Facebook feeds are absolutely fabricated stories. And certain individuals in the alternative media that have gone in certain directions, race-baiting directions, supporting politicians, trying to pull people back in the matrix, literally promising them fake magic pills, dick pills, if you will, to boost their mood and become a successful person able to take on the threat of the new world order. And I've asked multiple times, where are the off-grid communities full of people that are aware that aren't killing each other and get involved in dramas and infighting? People want to live in a world of freedom without government and police and taxation. And people need to be active in how they're going to live that way and not be dependent on the system, including welfare. So I just wrapped up a podcast relating to Costilla County and the need for Costilla County residents to actually speak up. And the fact that that has not taken place is not a sign that there is a active, organized, currently that is, movement. And we could see this in other cities and other territories where there are injustices taking place, draconian rules being passed, and uh, people aren't at City Hall. Meanwhile, you look at life in the city, the job market, this gender war that I talk about, competition, pit the men against the women, pit the women against the men. There's only so many jobs, so it's all down to how you can schmooze the boss. Not only during the interview, but the game is being played in the workplace, in the office. And the discrimination that's taking place in the workplace, we have, you know, middle managers that prefer the hot little body. And so you have an epidemic of all these men that at one point used to have jobs in the streets. Suffering from mental illness because they've been in the streets, because they're not showering, because they're breathing in the toxic air. We go back to Portland and we talk about the news of the toxic air that they're now discovering. Portland just happens to be a place where there's a whole lot of mentally ill homeless people that are running around talking to themselves. Could there be a connection between their environment? I've mentioned this many, many times in so many different ways. A connection between our environment and our moods and our health. Is Portland a conscious city? We look at Portland, I talked about it as a microcosm for the macro. We look at the fakeness. We look at the vanity. We look at the emphasis over the physical, over the genuine spiritual. Right now in America, you have the American refugee experience. People are traveling every which way and sometimes back and forth trying to find a place to settle, maybe find a job. A lot of them are looking for work and some of them are highly talented and have done a number of things in their lifetime. I met one recently is fixing my transmission. And even they are having a hard time finding jobs. And sometimes they wonder if it's their race, if they're in an area that is mostly populated by another group. There are tensions now between insiders and outsiders, locals and outsiders. And being from Oregon... You know, I saw extreme gentrification on steroids. And I said that Portland would be the future New York of the West Coast. And so in that case, if if you're a local and you're priced out, it's a very painful experience, especially when a lot of the newcomers aren't very friendly. You know, game playing in a lot of different ways. They were to pretty much have a good time for the moment for themselves, but yet not care about who they walk on, or the lives that they affect. But at the same time, in hindsight, Portland has always been a city, somewhat of a melting pot like New York, where people have come from all over. And that's a part of the history. And we see this repeated history everywhere where at some point, everybody was an outsider. 
And I look at the situation again with Costilla County, and I see this fear of outsiders and assumptions without even bothering to really get to know someone and get beyond the misunderstandings. Because ultimately, I think people want to have friends and have a good time. But see, if people were waking up, they would see through these illusions of separations and boxes and how the media clearly has a way of demonizing, if you look at it carefully, except for the Asians, demonizing every group. But mostly a particular number of groups at this time. And using the media platform to set one group against another and then a new cycle that repeats like a mind control mantra that speaks to certain groups and says this group is your enemy and the majority of these people believe this way. You know, and in doing so, it does kind of reinforce the mass consciousness because they are watching the TV. And the television is instrumental in shaping minds and thoughts, but also the internet, as I reference fake news, and the internet replacing regular relationships, which people need. People need real relationships and friendships with real people. The internet can simulate some of that, and there is an exchange of energy. In some ways, and I know a lot of you have noticed this, we've also seen a rise in nasty behavior over the internet. So that's a lot of nasty energy to connect with in order to fish through some positive stuff, which is really just simulating what we should be doing in the real life. Now, we could talk about people using Facebook as a counterfeit revolution. Oh, let's set up a Facebook group and organize here. Yeah, so everybody can get on and get into arguments and uh, people can uh, take things out of context if they want, try to find something that might incriminate someone. Oh, this is what the group thinks. That's not people waking up. Physically, people need to be talking and organizing and people need to have a say. All different types of people need to have a say and have a voice and should use their voice to make suggestions as to how we can raise awareness. Some people can raise awareness as to how, you know, for example, Costilla County, how can we work with the county? You know, how can we move this forward? How can we educate people about what is current? A fully awake population would have the physical energy, stamina, to actually be able to process some of the stuff. Uh, there are a fair amount of people that are suffering on a health level, physical, mental, spiritual. There are diet issues. Uh, the propaganda, all the toxic stuff and fear does affect the body, the stuff that is on the television. Uh, the stuff that is on the internet, all the fear-based stuff, oh, don't even bother. They're just going to kill you anyway. Uh, you have all of this focus on the politics. Trump versus Cruz and the manufactured sex scandal. Just to pull people in as text, Ted Cruz, by design, implodes his own campaign, as he's supposed to, because it's a show. So an awake population, an awake liberty movement, when it co opt its own integrity... They wouldn't do that. They would be working to find a way outside the system. So, on the other hand, we talk about miracles. We talk about creating your own reality. We talk about manifesting your destiny. And I think that some things are within our ability to grasp. Some things may not be there for us to experience. So I don't believe that you can have anything you want. Certain things that may violate free will. You know, you can think about a few people trying to wake up the whole world, like a group of 20. You can make a positive difference. You can put your minds together and evolve your own consciousness. You can clear yourself of all that foreign energy. All the propaganda that may have affected you at some point, do some real self-healing. And maybe do the things that you need to do in this lifetime. That we have the power to do. And that some of us are doing. 
And we may forget as we're doing that 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 is the most important thing. It's not everybody waking up. Not if this is a matrix where souls that are at a certain level of consciousness, energy, voltage, behavior. This is like a, a giant melting pot of souls that are obviously here for a reason. This is an experience that does have meaning. This is not happening by accident. And there are many that have bridged the gap from becoming conspiracy aware of certain deceptions to looking even deeper at what's pulling the strings and then looking even deeper behind that and realizing that this is a matrix. But there's a reason that we're in this type of a simulation where those things are going on. And I think, I suspect, there's a reason why certain things are in plain sight. A giant virtual reality video game that is ours and ours alone, yet we're sharing it. We're sharing this experience in this holographic virtual reality simulation. Okay. We are here for a reason. We how some way, some where, who knows what the fuck led to this. Many people here from many different places. Many people here with different histories here on the planet and elsewhere. Troubling, many people alive today in cities, they're acting less human. Whatever that means. What I can say is that the solar flare research that I cite, the cycles referencing the high and the low, the hot and the cold, it is something that drives consciousness. I do believe that. Periods where people are more awake, connecting with their spiritual self, and periods where it seems that there's a descent into madness, and it can be seen in society. So learning about the solar flare cycles, the war cycles, and how they connect with solar maximum, you can literally see rise and falls of periods spaced out about 10 to 11 years. There's more overdoses, more fights, more wars, more rapes, but also more moving, more movement, more creativity, more creation of media. So people are experiencing that stuff in different ways. But what we have here is a failure to communicate, a fairly simple idea. Because the linearist, I have trouble with. I've talked about the linearist, uh, absolutist worldview. Everybody's waking up, and the opposite of that, we're all going to die. This is going down this month. And then, t in today's society, I'm seeing people that are tied up in some of the fake distortions going on, and the fear, and also the wild, blind faith in the idea that there's a collective shift in consciousness. I see people also, and I've talked to them, that are a mix of both. You know, they'll talk about some extreme thing, and then go back to, oh, the banker's going to be arrested, something like that, everybody's waking up. And then back and forth between these extremes. And it's like there's a middle way. Other than these extremes, there is another way in interpreting what's going on with human society. And I also see my mind's eye is like going up a ladder. And in these cycles, we're going up these ladders into these other realities where there's certain things going on. You look at the history of man that we know of the last several thousand years. Look at all the things that have happened. Solar cycles are also connected with ideas and breakthroughs. If you've been paying attention to spaceweather.com, uh, and also the Space Weather Prediction Center. That's a .gov website. You could see when there's a geomagnetic storm and when, when the planetary index is, is fairly high. And again this month, noticing when there was activity and then boom, the attack in Brussels. 
and again this rise in angry rhetoric. And then again I've talked about people that have posted some pretty inflammatory, insulting, racist stuff on Facebook, joking about sniping Syrian refugees. So, I can tell you honestly, I've experienced that over and over and over again as we go through this. People talking mad shit when they are out of balance and they're being affected by the sun. And they want to go to war with someone or something. The problem is, they're not awake yet. So the fact that, hey, their testosterone is natural. You know, the whole being aware of what's going on and want to react to something. I'm not talking about fighting the government. But there's things that we should react to and use that physical strength for. Whether it be building a home or taking care of our body. Also taking time to meditate and ground. Uh, but also in certain situations, people do need to stand up for their rights and defend themselves in some way. When people are unconscious and they're being programmed by the mass media, when they're being affected by these changes, boom, here is the event, here is the situation that we want to direct your surplus of human prana chi energy towards this terror attack. Look over here and connect with it. Look over here at your optimism and we have Sanders and the bird, you know, landing and the, you know, the spiritual moment, even though you have many atheists that are supporters of Sanders, you know, they, they really pit people off each other based on religion. I'm not saying the Sanders campaign is based on that. Uh, but other people that are considered or playing the part of the right-wing Christian, even if they're not, they can easily send voters by design to the other side. Uh, Bernie Sanders supports drone attacks in the Middle East. Bernie Sanders is not a person operating outside the system. He's seen as a lesser of all the evils. Next to him you have Hillary. She plays the part, again, good cop, bad cop, Trump. Oh, she cares about this issue or that issue. Oh, she's going to bring out the truth about Area 51. That's the latest. Oh, she's a UFO truther now. Oh, she's a female. Something for the feminists to get behind. Well, we have a black president. Now we have to have female as if Hillary Clinton represents women. Or someone that would improve the lives of women. Either through her policies, Middle East policies, or elsewhere or domestically. Then we have Donald Trump. Talks about trade, economics, keeping America safe from all those people that want to claim they want to commit terror attacks against the United States, even though since 9 11, how many genuine terror attacks have we had from Middle Eastern immigrants, often put in this box of Muslim? How many have we had? So the reality is, Trump has galvanized massive support by some of the buzzwords that he's used and the take charge attitude that some people feel that they want to see out of a presidential candidate, even if they know the government's corrupt, just talk dirty to me. Just, just talk like you're the boss. And Donald Trump does that. He talks dirty to him. He treats him like, get him out of here. He, he takes charge. We're going to do this. We're going to make America great again. What do you mean? We're going to turn America into a giant concentration camp? where people can end up on lists and be told to go to a certain facility or camp if they're Muslim. So I have seen this depth of madness and this political messiah, schizophrenia, where people that should know better are giving their energy to them. What I can tell you, as I get ready to close here, is that there's a reason we're here. And humanity obviously is going through these cycles and ups and downs, and it's important to understand these cycles and how they affect you. And how your own spiritual evolution is your job. It's no one else's job, and it's not your job to fix the world. And because certain realities are coming, certain dangerous realities because a certain amount of the population has not woken up. 
Don't assume that there isn't a mountain for you. Don't assume that there isn't a place of safety for you. You know, the very actions that you take in thoughts and deeds and things you say, the way you treat people, these things and more, I think, have a huge impact on what's going to happen to you before this lifetime is over. Not everybody understands how karma always comes to collect. But I'm absolutely convinced this is a reality where we get to learn about cause and effect. Literally, scientifically, but also through our actions. As all generations are karmically connected, the past, present, and the future, as it is so. We are now living out the end result of thousands of years of human activity and what they have allowed into their lives, into their spirits, into their minds. I recommend that during your stay here on this planet that you educate yourself. And like Bruce Lee, developing his own style of martial arts. You're going to have to find through trial and error how to evolve your own consciousness to something that can exist and flourish in a world beyond this. That is your job and your job alone. And I'm Alex Hansery signing off.